week at the Paris Air Show, Airbus flew an autonomous aircraft, to which IEN readers said, eh. So, this week, we're going for speed. The next day, the company actually unveiled a high-speed demonstrator that they called the Racer. It's designed to reach a cruise speed of about 250 miles per hour. That's about 90 miles per hour faster than the average copter, and it was based off the X-3. The X-3 is believed to be the world's fastest helicopter developed by Eurocopter, which is now Airbus Helicopters. So you see, it's, it's all coming together. They say RACER is a code name, but really, it's an acronym for Rapid and Cost-Effective Rotorcraft. I, I just think that we're trying too hard with the names these days, guys. So just call it the RACER. The RACER includes a patented double wing concept to improve aerodynamics, stiffness, and weight reduction. It also has a hybrid metal composite airframe. It should also be quieter and include lateral rotors as well as a main rotor, both driven by two engines. Airbus expects the RACER to reach final assembly in 2019, with the first flight scheduled for 2020. I mean, not that the company is in any hurry. In a release, the CEO said that the RACER will pave the way for the new time-sensitive services for 2030 and beyond. 2030 and beyond. So if you can stave off that need for like flight for life for another 13 years, you're gonna be in good hands. Until then, slow copters to your death. Stay fit, go jog. I will, I swear. Taking it! A commercial vessel recently navigated the Copenhagen Harbor in Denmark without incident, on its own. In fact, it seems relatively innocuous, but what made the story interesting is that when the 28-meter Spitzer Ermad maneuvered around the harbor, the captain was at the helm on the shore. It was a demonstration of the world's first remotely operated vessel from Rolls-Royce and partner Spitzer, a global towage operator. The vessel was built in 2016 and has onboard sensors that give the captain full awareness of the tug's surroundings, including radar, lidar, cameras, and audio. All of the information is relayed to a state-of-the-art remote operations center on shore, which looks like an immersive gamer's wet dream. The captain controls the vessel's position via satellite using the Rolls-Royce dynamic positioning system. The vessel also has a pair of Rolls-Royce diesel engines, 2,000 kilowatts at 1,800 RPM. And that sounds big, big engines. The test successfully demonstrated vessel navigation, situational awareness, remote control, and communication systems. Ermod has now completed 16 hours of remote control operation. The vessel is the bridge between where we are now and fully autonomous boats. And I just want to jump into that captain's chair, maybe after it's handed to me when someone says, number one, you have the bridge. But I mean, that's just, I mean, that's mostly for me. I mean, though, I, I mean, I might have to be like a little further down the ladder, like number 51, you have the bridge. It's just like, because everyone else is dead, I get it. I will steer this through the harbor. I'm taking it! Stay fit, go jog. GE Additive has only been around for a little more than seven months. And yet this week, the company announced that it is developing what it is calling the world's largest laser-powered metal 3D printer. Sounds like a busy seven months. According to Mohammed Edashami, VP and general manager of GE Additive, the printer, which they're calling Atlas, will be able to make metal parts that fit into a one meter cube out of titanium, aluminum, and other metals. Atlas will be capable of printing jet engine structural components for single aisle aircraft. Of course, it will have other applications for manufacturers in automotive, power, and oil and gas, but the news came out of the Paris Air Show, so thus the emphasis on aerospace. The largest 3D metal printer on the market is actually the X-Line 2000R from Concept Laser, and Airbus uses it to make wing brackets. Now, if you recall, GE paid $599 million for a majority stake, or 75%, in Concept Laser in late October. The Atlas is being designed and developed by engineers from both Concept and GE. The company didn't offer a look at the machine, but it does have plans to unveil the demonstrator around the division's one year anniversary at the Forum Next show held in Germany. Last year at Forum Next, Ed Ashami, who has 30 plus years with GE Aviation, said that GE plans to manufacture 10,000 additive machines over the next 10 years for customers, and about a thousand more machines just for GE. I'd say the world's largest 3D printer, metal 3D printer, is not a bad start. I'm David Manti, this is Engineering by Design.